Hello everyone. Today we begins with the physiology of gastrointestinal tract and in this video we are going to cover applied aspect of the stomach for example vomiting and peptic ulcer. So triggers for vomiting it is a simple picture which shows you how the vomiting triggers and which are the factors which triggers the vomiting. So here you are seeing that CTZ, CTZ means chemoreceptor trigger zone. It is known as chemoreceptor trigger zone where it lacks the blood brain barrier. So the, there is no presence of blood brain barrier at this CTZ region or chemoreceptor trigger zone. So endogenous toxins, drugs and vagal affluent directly having effect over this CTZ region and it also having the direct effect from the pharyngeal stimulation, gastric duodenal distension or the irritation. This, all these factors of the pharyngeal stimulation, gastric duodenal distension or the irritation also having the afferent goes to the nucleus tractus solitarius. So here the fibers from the nucleus tractus solitarius and chemoreceptor trigger zone both going to stimulate the vomiting center. So this is the vomiting center and other stimulus for the vomiting center runs from the motion inner ear signaling to the vestibular nucleus. So it maintains the motion whenever someone feeling the motion sickness or someone you you might heard about the some people who are traveling to the mountains and they having the vomiting who are traveling inside the train or buses and they having the feeling of nausea and vomit and our body posture signaling and everything will done with the help of this inner ear so there will be signaling to the vestibular apparatus and vestibular nucleus and it initiate or stimulate the vomiting center so it begins the vomit and the pain, repulsive sights, smells and emotional factors all this also going to affect the vomiting centers or stimulate the vomiting center. There are two words nausea and vomiting. Nausea means uh, it's uh, just uh, initiation of the vomiting but without any type of food content coming out from the mouth. No food content will be coming out it just uh, initiation of the vomiting without any food content coming out from the mouth it is known as nausea and the vomiting means actual food content coming out of the mouth so here from the vomiting center the efferent goes to the vagus nerve and spinal motor neurons and this vomiting center is located inside the medulla and it produces the retching and vomiting now we are going to see which are the actual events of the vomiting. So I already told you that uh, vomiting centers having the efferent one goes to the spinal motor neurons and second goes to the vagus nerve. So vagal efferent. What this vagal efferent will do? There will be the shortening of the esophagus, proximal relaxation of the stomach and giant retrograde contraction of the small intestine. So there will be the shortening of the esophagus, proximal relaxation of the stomach and small intestine giant retrograde contraction. So the food which is present inside the stomach and the small intestine will be reflux bed towards the mouth. So it is it will be easy as the length of the esophagus has become shortening. Somatic motor neurons as I told you that efferents from the vomiting center also goes to the spinal motor neurons and it these are the somatic motor neurons and there will be the contraction of the anterior abdominal muscles and contraction of the diaphragm. So with the contraction of these anterior abdominal muscles the abdominal pressure becomes increased and there will be the contraction of the diaphragm. Autonomic and somatic efferents. In the future, whenever you having the vomit, then please note that vomiting doesn't only mean the 
content of the food coming out from the mouth but it also initiate different type of uh, different type of body changes for example increase in the heart rate sweating and all the thing how it is going to happen this autonomic and somatic efferents going to having the effect over the heart so there will be the increase in the heart rate and force of the contraction there will be the increase in the secretions from the salivary gland so there will be the larger amount of liquids or the saliva it is released inside your mouth there will be the paler and cold sweating of the skin so you will feel the that uh, sweating in your skin has been increased constriction of the sphincters of the bladder and anus so these are the prodromal signs often precede vomiting so first you will feel these all are the prodromal signs and later all the food content will be coming out of your mouth so these are the warning signals that the vomiting might happen within a few minutes all right now the peptic ulcer causes of the peptic ulcer high acid and peptic content irritation of the stomach mucosa poor blood supply poor secretions of mucus infection with the h pylori or helicobacter pylori so this all initiate the peptic ulcer or the ulceration of the gastric mucosa now few students having the confused how this blood poor blood supply going to stimulate the or how this poor blood supply having the peptic ulcer produce the peptic ulcer so poor blood supply that means there is a lack of nutritious environment around the different type of mucosa cells of the stomach and one of the mucosa cell which is producing the soluble and insoluble mucus without mucus or without the insoluble mucus the hcl having the direct effect over the gastric mucosa and produce the peptic ulcer so simply the poor blood supply also produce the peptic ulcer and uh, these are the ulcer sites it is mostly present in the cardiac region of the stomach mostly at the pylorus part and these are the marginal ulcers other causes of the ulcer ethanol ingestion of the ethanol alcohol smoking and said like brufen or aspirin and said mean non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs Zollinger Ellison syndrome and it is a type of tumor it is known as gastrinoma or gastrin secreting tumor it also increase the hcl secretion and psychological disturbances and hereditary so all these are the causes of the peptic ulcer now the treatment of peptic ulcer how we are going to treat the patients of the peptic ulcer here i am making the video of the gastrointestinal physiology applied aspect so i am not covering this treatment as well as peptic ulcer part in detail because i need to learn this peptic ulcer in detail in much detail in the next years of the this mbbs curriculum so the treatment options of the peptic ulcer first one increase in the mucosal resistance plus decrease in the acid secretion which are the treatment modalities antacids we have to give the antacids these are the gels which coats the mucosa and it is known as gelucil histamine receptor blockers for example cimetidine and ranitidine these are the drugs which blocks the histamine receptors or h2 receptor blockers muscarinic receptor blockers we have to give the atropine gastrin receptor blockers we have to give the proglumide proton pump inhibitors these are the omeprazole pantoprazole rebeprazole etc these all are the proton pump inhibitors increase resistance of mucosa to the acid with the sucral fat appropriate antibiotics to treat the helicobacter pylori infection vagotomy with pyloroplasty 
so this is the surgical modality to treat the peptic ulcer and removal of the antral mucosa so all these are the treatment choices available for the patients of the peptic ulcer